All right, so before we get into the video, I just wanted to say thank you so much for clicking on the video and that if you guys are new here or have been around and haven't subscribed yet, consider hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell down below. It's the best way to support my channel and make sure you are notified for all future videos. Thank you for watching and let's get right into it. All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Slime Isekai Memories video. So today I have for you the Dark Tempered Edge, Dark 2.0 Tempered Edge um, Original Clear. Um, this is just without the missions. Um, as you can see, I've done them. Uh, I've recorded them, but they'll be in the, the next video. But yeah, basically, we're just going to go over um, real quick what the boss does, how he works, and then um, I'll show the gameplay and the team that I used uh, just to naturally clear it. Um, just no missions or anything involved aside from, I guess, using Isis, but you do need Isis on the team. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let's get right into it. So Gazelle, he does a lot of things. So he increases his own defense. He decreases Soul of Secrets damage by 80% and the gauge increase by 80% for four turns. And then he'll increase his own crit resistance by 80% and pierce resistance by 80% for six turns. And then right before he gets his ult, he will debuff the, the enemy He'll debuff your units, sorry, not the enemy. He'll debuff your units, um, the Vanguard units. He'll give them attack up seal for four turns, crit rate up seal for four turns, pierce rate up seal for four turns, and then he'll debuff your blue orbs. So basically on that turn, which I think is turn five or so, you do not want to have your DPS units out. Or if you do have them out, because you need to have them out there for some reason, then you need to make sure that you don't see the debuff on them anymore otherwise you'll be doing significantly less damage than um, if you want uh, than you'd want right because if you use uh, the new King Reamer's um, crit rate buff but you still have the debuff on it it's basically like a waste of skill points so just keep that in mind um, he also increases his own physical attack resistance by 50% and magic attack resistance resistance by 50% for two turns and then right after he ults he will do his um, like an all target just attack for 30% of your max HP. So just be aware of that. Um, you it, you can bring a healer. Um, I didn't find it necessary. I honestly really didn't need to heal at all. But um, if you feel that like you need to, then you can bring in a healer, um, maybe like Luminous, like Wind Luminous or Trainee or something like that. Um, but in my experience with playing the stage multiple times i felt that it was completely unnecessary so with that out of the way let's get right into the uh recording because i pre-recorded it and yeah it's honestly a pretty easy stage in my opinion all right so we're here with the uh with the recording and this is the team that i used i used obviously the new dark Veldora. And then I just put um, Orc Protector for the extra 3% Dark Attack. Uh, I use Isis, Dark Milum, and Eren. I have obviously the three protection unit, the uh, protection trait units um, as their support. And then I have the Hero and King Rimuru in the back. So I have uh, Eren here because she does um, orange to green orb change. And I found that you do kind of you do need a character that does orange to green because the dark the dark team currently has no units. There are no dark units who do this orb change. And to consistently get full six hand combos, you do need someone who orb changes orange to green, which there are a lot of. Um, Eren being one, you can use Ranga. Um, I think Soe works as well. Water Soe. You have... Um, I don't know, there, there are a lot of characters who do orange to green. So I just personally chose Eren because, um, I mean, she's a six star because she's free. And then I could also just put the Earth Millum um, and just give her stats. Now the hero, I just threw her in here. Um, you honestly could use like anyone. See, I did, I really kind of thought she was useless. Uh, I should have brought someone else. Uh, who that could be for you, you could use Misery, you could use Dark Luminous. Um, you can honestly use a variety of people, it really doesn't matter. And then King Remove there is 
one going to be for dps and two i'm gonna take advantage of his alt eating skill so um i don't need to worry about building his alt because i can just use it eat gazelle's alt get mine and then just switch him in the back and until i'm ready to you know use the crit rate skill and um completely nuke the boss so i'm gonna hit play um this stage honestly is not that bad um the team itself works so well, especially with um, Veldora. If you can consistently get Veldora, you'll find that orb change is not really that big of a deal. Um, so yeah, it's honestly pretty easy. Just making sure you know when to switch it, when to switch characters in and stuff like that. So here we start off um, two blue and four green, obviously meant for Isis to orb change. And I'm not going to switch anyone in because I don't feel the need to switch anyone in until um, like specific i need them for specific reasons um of course he counters us three times in a row um and you'll see that he's actually kind of tanky like um my milam's like uh level 100 she has a six star weapon and like he's not taking that much damage but here we'll pop the two orb changes um aaron and milam and then i'll pop the veldora so veldora work how veldora works is you always want to pop him last in my opinion so that you take advantage of his skill reduction and also the magic buff. Um, we're gonna send the full hand here. I honestly probably should have used Isis's, um, or Isis, sorry, Isis's uh, green orb skill, uh, but I decided not to for this turn and I will use it this upcoming turn. So yeah, he's honestly doing a lot of damage. So on turn three uh, is when he gets, gets his um, crit resistance and pierce resistance. So here we're gonna pop those again and then pop Isis's or Isis's, I'm sorry, Isis's skill. Um, as you can see, I'm constantly making the skill skill cost um, reduced. So it's really easy to just keep orb changing consistently. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're just trying to build up alts and stuff, trying to build up skill points. And just honestly, we're not trying to kill him immediately. I'm just trying to wait out all the turns until he's vulnerable and then I can kill him. That's the best way I found to play this specific stage if you're having trouble. Um, so here I swap out Milam because th at this turn on turn four, um, uh, right before he gets his ult, so going into turn five, he will debuff all your all your units. So here I just choose not to use any, um, any skill points or any orb changes because I just felt it was kind of unnecessary. I didn't really see the need to do so. Um, do I pop the... I think I... No, I don't pop the um, the rewind here. Honestly, the rewind is kind of useless in this stage. I just found it to be completely unnecessary. But, I mean, it might work for you, but for me it didn't. It didn't really do anything. So here we're getting kind of unlucky with the orange orbs. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but I just... I want more green, um, more soul of skills, right? So here is the only time I switch Rimuru in outside of wanting to ult him. I will use that skill because I'm guaranteed his ult, right? We will not take any damage, so I can use all these orbs and go in with confidence knowing that Rimuru is going to eat his ult, so I'm not going to take any damage, and I have a free Re Rimuru ult. So I get that, and then he does the AoE, which honestly does a significant amount of damage because it is 30% of your health. But here, I'll swap um, Hero out, and... I'll pop the rewind here and just clear these four oranges because I have no good orb changes. I don't really want to swap Milam in um, because there would be no point. I don't really need to use her orb change at the moment. So here I get pretty lucky. Um, I pop is Isis's skill and then I'm going to use Veldora because I have, I have two um, just to reduce the skill cost. And then I think I pop Isis's gauge buff. Yeah. Um, just to get myself another Veldora. Um, it's not truly needed, but it all, it will, it's always good to have one. Um, so here you can see by like turn 6, turn 7, we don't really have much health chipped off of him. Only like maybe 25%. Um, which is fine. It's completely fine. So here, um, turn 8 is when his debuffs go away. So I have just popped the oranges. There's no point in not doing so. Um... I just want to have these skill points so I can pop all the buffs and kill him the next turn. I found that turn 8 was the best because he doesn't have anything, um, no buffs, uh, debuffs run out, so this is usually the optimal time to kill him. 
So here I'm going to swap in Dark Rimuru, obviously, and Milam, just making sure that I have or at least one orb of each character so I don't swap people in and then I don't use their ult, right? Because um, I've actually had that happen to me where I get careless. So I'm going to pop one just to reduce the skill cost. Um, because I have two, it's, it's, it'll be fine. Um, and you know that each skill is just continuously buffing up that magic attack from Veldora. So here I pop those, and then I pop the two attack buffs. Um, I don't think I pop any other skill. Yeah, then I pop another Veldora for that full 70%. Reduce the skill cost in case this doesn't kill, because um, he does have a lot of health, right? And then we're doing really good damage, just cleaving away at him. And then Milam here does 18,000, but he guarded. So she would have done probably like 20,000. Premier does 47,000, and then Milam kills him for 144,000. As you can see, it was really, really simple. Um, as long as you have a good, like, Milam and just even a level 80 Reamer will work for you. Um, I, you just need, like, somewhat decent gear, and you should be able to clear the stage. If you don't have, like, a really, really strong um, Milam, because as you see uh, right here, right, I do have a level 100 Milam. Um, you may need to uh, think about bringing in Isis's ult because she can do decent damage, um, especially with all the buffs. So you, if you don't have a really strong Milam, then you might need to take that into consideration. But overall, the stage was really easy. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty easy clear. I don't think uh, EX3 is going to be much more difficult, but I'll put out a video of it as soon as it comes out. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.